lecture. Okay, so I'm going to give a, a brief uh, introduction to uh, Hello. today's speaker. Okay. All right, so I have the pleasure to introduce today's lecture speaker, a friend, a former colleague, Stephen Lee.
graphic designers, developers, politicians, and community leaders on a variety of projects and sometimes over long periods of workshops and feasibilities before actually developing the buildings that I'm going to show today. This broader, more multidisciplinary view of architects seems more necessary today uh, where we fa face where we face with social and technological forces that are reshaping the way people live, work, and interact in the city. And it's undoubtedly the influence by which I've looked at in terms of my own practice, uh, which is involved in a series of projects, research, and consulting. So of course we are involved with a series of architectural projects and investigations from a vertical villa in Tainan to an office building in Chongqing, as well as large-scale mixed-use master plans in landscape and uh, commercial buildings. In the process of setting up my studio, uh, I founded as well uh, New Street Collective, which is a shared work and social space promoting creative, local, and international startups from fashion, lifestyle, interior design, furniture, architecture, and branding. With this collection of companies and individuals, we are able to draw on a base of talent and expertise and often share ideas with each other on projects. In designing the co-sharing space, we teamed up with a French lifestyle company to design and fit out the space to function also as a showroom. Because designers spend a lot of time working and uh, being involved in creative endeavors, we wanted to make a space that could serve as also kind of working laboratory for design and a salon for hosting events and gatherings. We are also partnering with investors to explore investment and development in Indonesia, where we move beyond the traditional role of a consultant to that of a strategic stakeholder in the process, uh, including uh, land selection, infrastructure development, feasibilities, and master planning. We've also worked with the Hong Kong and Barcelona government on research and knowledge sharing on contemporary urban issues such as post-industrial waterfront redevelopment. And this was a, a multi-year research where we looked at prime industrial sites in both Hong Kong and Barcelona uh, in, in this case, Hong Kong, it was the, the Kuantong uh, waterfront, and in Barcelona, it was the last remaining waterfront um, called Little Rot. Along with the commercial work of the office, I've been interested in exploring the relationship of infrastructure and placemaking in a series of speculative work that asks the central question, what are the needs of 21st century public infrastructure or more specifically in Hong Kong, how we move beyond thinking about infrastructure, not only in terms of efficiency, but a much broader idea encompassing sustainability and quality of life. With the West Kowloon M Plus Pavilion, a competition I was involved with several years ago, I was interested in how a temporary building for a specific cultural purpose could also simultaneously perform as a piece of urban infrastructure and public space in the city. The goal was to reimagine a morphology that somehow evokes the memory of Hong Kong's industrial past, but also opening up the waterfront to a much broader public engagement. Following this was another competition about the same time uh, to reimagine the Quintong waterfront. Our proposal called Kai Tak Ai, uh, which was a play off of the London Eye, asked the question, how can Hong Kong people reconnect with the harbor, which is the life and heritage of the city, in a new way? What if Hong Kong infrastructure focused not only on efficiency and speed, but also precisely its opposite, to support diversion, amusement, and recreation. 
So in this case, given the particular history and, and the contested political situation with land reclamation, I was interested in looking at the strengths of Hong Kong in terms of how it treats infrastructure and to reimagine it in a way that could really engage the waterfront, engage the activities along the waterfront, and to connect people with this, this particular experience of the city that actually people have lost. This proposal looks at the ingredients of Hong Kong's strengths to infuse them with new sets of values that allow people to experience the harbor in a variety of different ways. More recently, we participated in a bi-city research collaboration called the Hong Kong Barcelona Urban Exchange, which has a series of workshops and symposiums held in Hong Kong and Barcelona and discuss the future of post-industrial sites. So this, this is the uh, particular site that I mentioned uh, where our Hong Kong group focused on uh, the uh, research for uh, the Barcelona site and the Barcelona counterparts uh, researched the area of Kuntan. So our, our research team led a proposal for one of the last remaining waterfronts. And the most interesting aspect of this research was not the proposal itself, but how we as outsiders could provide a new way of seeing opportunities in a traditional European context. And for us to learn likewise from the fresh perspectives of our Barcelona counterparts in Quinton. Part of that was actually to, to look at some mutants kind of hybrid conditions that are often found in Asia and to look at opportunities that would seemingly feel un unthinkable in a way in a European context. Likewise, uh, our European counterparts would be able to look at our sites in a, in a much fresher eye. At the same time, we imagine the famous Ramblas in the context of Hong Kong's three-dimensional urbanism to propose a landscape that connected historic sites uh, from the streets uh, to the mountains. So the collaboration between Hong Kong and Barcelona was, was important because of the type of discussion and analysis of the different contexts. And these contexts were important because they would produce a proposal that would have been uh, impossible if we'd only looked at it from a particular single point of view. The same could be said about the main topic of this presentation, which is about the housing projects that I talk about in Los Angeles. And this image is, is uh, an area downtown, uh, one of the projects down below. And you can see that the context is a very different one from Hong Kong, in a way almost the extreme opposite from what you see here. While Hong Kong is a quintessential vertical city, LA is an expansive horizontal collection of urban villages. Hong Kong has only one twelfth of the area of land compared to metropolitan LA, but with six times the density of population which explains why Hong Kong is a city of residential towers and LA is a single family detached home. And unlike Hong Kong, it's not limited by geographical barriers or land limitations. So development is thin and sprawling and with pockets of density that the majority of it is between one and two story buildings. Infrastructure, mobility, and technology are the lifeblood of the city and have immense influence on the morphology of how people interact with it. LA was an original collection of satellite villages connected by trolleys, but over the past century developed into an automobile-oriented city. And this has profound effects on the image, lifestyle, and functions that have evolved in LA. Just as land scarcity, density, and transportation have shaped Hong Kong identity and lifestyles. So has the mobility shaped LA. 
culture is also important in terms of attitudes and lifestyle and housing. Uh, art, entertainment, design, sense of individuality and experimentation have shaped the culture of LA in the way that business and finance have shaped Hong Kong. The sense of individuality and expression uh, and experimentation is reflected in this diversity of residential types, the suburban, suburban family home, the hilltop modernist house, the gate of the state. And one of the consequences of the individualism is this kind of, uh, this, this kind of extreme socio and economic difference that's reflected in the downtown LA, which is on the uh, upper right. And this area was originally a, a very vibrant commercial center, but over the past 100 years has gone through a steady period of decline. It's become notorious as a dumping ground for the nation's homeless and mentally ill. And as the context from which uh, these housing projects are created, which attempt to address these kind of social issues and revitalization in this changing city. So these projects that uh, I talk about, there are four of them. One is the is a project for low-income housing, which is on the on the southwestern edge along the freeway. And there are two projects in the inner city, uh, Star Apartments and Rainbow, which deal with homeless populations and mentally ill. And then finally, the fourth project, which is uh, located on the eastern edge of the downtown, which is uh, located in an area of a thriving arts district and also home to the Southern California Institute of Architecture. <coughs> in developing these four cases, we looked at the essential components of community to recognize the city as a diverse collection of groups with different needs, but also basic requirements, such as safety, a sense of ownership, social services, and spaces both for the individual and collective. For New Carver Apartments, uh, this was a project uh, for elderly, low-income residents. And the challenge was really dealing with this extreme site condition of the freeway, the, the physical and psychological barrier and the, and the noise and the crime of, along the, in the neighboring area. It's a project, a uh, six-story housing project with about 90 units uh, that include social services and public spaces. And as I mentioned, the sound, very basic issues of sound and safety were, were concerns that we had to deal with. So the, the tension was really between this really extreme condition on the outside and, and the need to create a sort of sense of community and belonging within. In, this, in the plan and section here, we see the concept of this circular courtyard building uh, with a grand staircase and amphitheater uh, located in the center. And on the on the outside, this, this kind of serrated form, which responds to the freeway. So there's this constant tension between the need to respond and, and actually also to, to create a kind of a safe barrier uh, for the spaces inside. The ground floor on the left uh, is arranged as a as a kind of extension of the street, creating a series of internal blocks, a program with visibility from the outside. So these, these social spaces include a community kitchen, barbecue area, meeting rooms, and activity rooms. On the upper level, you see the sawtooth edges uh, of, these, uh, of the units, and they express these uh, the individual units of the, the rooms. There are 26 square meter uh, units, so they're, they're very small. So, really, the, the, the heart of the project was about making the experience of these communal spaces and the social services the, the kind of binder that connects the individual individual lives of the residents inside. 
So here in the in the lobby, you see that it's arranged not unlike a street where uh, the concern for sight lines and safety and openness uh, is is important. Uh, so the idea of openness and also allowing the, the activities from the outside to come in and to be expressed from outside. Here we see some views of the communal spaces. And it was important to, to also allow these social spaces to, to open out to the street, to really communicate the life and activity that, that occurs in the building. Connecting the ground floor is a grand staircase uh, that also serves as an amphitheater for activities and performances. And it's the idea of incorporating circulation and movement into the actual social spaces and to connect the street uh, to the community inside. From above the courtyard, uh, you arrive at this iconic circular space that's punctuated by this dy dynamic screen facade uh, that opens uh, onto corridors uh, and circulation in the building. So with this kind of bright protective space, the architecture registers the forces almost as if in slow motion of the speed of the freeway outside. The metallic screen creates uh, different qualities of life, uh, of light uh, through different parts of the day. And the simple accent colors also uh, enhance the kind of dynamism and movement within the space. Within the floors of the residential units, we also looked at how to, how to express particular functions, uh, social functions, such as laundry and entertainment rooms, and even also looked at functional elements like fire stairs as opportunities to create architectural events. From the outside, you can also see how the inner life kind of registers the activities on the outside with the sawtooth form and the indoor-outdoor spaces, as well as the, the color that, that highlights the activities from inside. As well, the voids carved in the building that connect the inner life of the courtyard from, and with views of different areas of context from the freeway to views of the city. And even at the level of the detail, uh, this is a social housing project. So the, the budgets here are very, uh, very constrained. But we looked at actually at the, at the architectural detail level how we could convey the, the meaning of the site and to express the forces that happen from outside. For instance, this elevation with the galvanized metal fins, uh, there are constructed with simple materials, with simpler, simple tubular steel profiles. So the, the cumulative effect is to create a very di dynamic and dramatic effect through very simple materials. So in this case, it's, we're dealing with pipe rail, we're dealing with plaster, uh, plaster walls and, and, and galvanized steel. But, it, but the effect is, uh, is uh, very compelling and dynamic. And at the end of the day, the, these individual elements create a space for activity and create a space for social events that happen inside. So now I'm going to turn to two other projects in the inner city, uh, Rainbow Apartments and Star Apartments, which are located in 